A supplemental type certificate is either uh, FAA or EASA approved major modification or repair to an existing type certified aeroplane engine or propeller. As it adds to the existing type certificate, it's deemed supplemental. If you visit the type certificate, you will not see details of the modification on the type certificate. It's extra, supplemental. The STC, which incorporates by reference the related type certificate, approves not only the modification, but how the modification affects the original design. The application must be made in the form and manner prescribed by either the FAA or EASA. The STC and its related information, all drawings, data and specifications, are the property of the <coughs> STC holder. You can sell an STC, it has value. Uh, you also have to uh, maintain ongoing integrity of the STC. So what that means is that the company owning the STC must remain in business. If they do not, then the STC has to go somewhere else. It has to be adopted. It has to have an owner. If it doesn't, you could be in trouble. But ultimately, my understanding is that if a company who produced an STC went out of business then the, if it was an American, typically the FAA would ensure that it had a new hold, which may actually be the type certificate holder. It means the manufacturer would finish up. First of all, type, supplemental type certificates. And we've got this expression here, F-O-T-S-T-C. What does it mean? First of type. It's the first version of this modification process. And of course, it needs to be approved. And the first version, maybe it's experimental. And so we go through this process. Used when certifying a product in an aircraft type or model for the first time. Close coordination is required with the FAA or EASA, as the case may be, with regards to the certification plan, conformity inspection, and both ground EMI and flight tests. What is EMI? Electromagnetic interference. We've got to make sure that for something that we install, it cannot interfere with the aeroplane, and the aeroplane does not interfere with it. So we, we look at electromagnetic interference, and we can measure it. We can, we can see how uh, it works, for example. The project is considered major by the FAA due to the scope and certification requirements. A completely new engineering data package, EDP, is prepared with a master drawing list, MDL. Notice that everything has abbreviations. Every three words we find, we bring them together and we make it into a, a, an abbreviation. <coughs> So we can have PMM. You know what this is? PMM. Better like Maria. <laughs> <laughs> the STC issued by the FAA will list the master drawing list that applies. Follow on approval. So we've had FOT, first of type. Now we're having FOA, follow on approval is used when a standalone customized EDP, anybody? See, the problem with procedures, uh, sorry, the problem with these abbreviations is they're just so random because mm -hmm. EDP is uh, engineering departmental procedures, for example. Here we're talking about engineering. engineering data package. So these are not standard abbreviations. They're just choosing to use them for now. And what we find is abbreviations can actually mean several different things, so to be careful. But anyway, in this context, we're talking about uh, engineering drawing package. The customized engineering drawing package will be uh, approved by uh, an 8110-3, approved by a DER, a designated engineering representative. This is an FAA nominee. This is how it's done in uh, at the FAA in the North America, uh, using the original STC as the basis for approval. The base STC data package is only provided upon request. 
the customer is intending to submit the customised EDP to its local airworthiness authority for approval, the FTC cover sheet and uh, AFMS, uh, aircraft flight manuals, I think, along with the 8110-3 approved EDP will be required. And what we've got to pay attention to is, in general, unless we are involved, this is the reality check now, unless we're involved in installing a brand new STC, it's a lot simpler. If, if we're doing the, uh, as it says, follow-on approval, means we are uh, installing a STC that's already been installed, it's a lot easier for us. Due to the inherent criticality, all changes to the design of an aircraft are required to be approved. In particular, to assess the STC for continuing airworthiness implications. And this is one of the areas where it's very, very important. For example, the terrible accident that occurred on Swiss Air Flight Treble 1, uh, when there was a fire, uh, this was because of an STC. They installed an IFE system. It was getting too hot. It needed cooling, but it didn't have cooling involved. Uh, and it was a bad installation, basically. And it brought an airplane down. And we've got to pay attention to what this STC is doing, where it is in the airplane, what it does to access, because if we put something in the aeroplane, it stops us seeing what was already in the aeroplane. So it means that it's preventing the previous inspection being carried out the way it was previously being carried out. So now, when you install an STC, you have to pay attention to what it's doing to the aeroplane, the, the impact that it's having on the aeroplane, mm -hmm. and how that should be addressed. And that's the difference. It wasn't like that. If I install something on the aeroplane, I would simply focus on what I've installed. Now I've got to pay attention to what it's doing to the aeroplane. A data approval issued by a designated engineering representative, which is usually issued on FAA form 8110 uh, 3, uh, equivalent to uh, an 8100 9. And we've got a note, uh, part 21 issues with this statement. What do I mean by that? I mean that the way it works with the FAA is not the way it works with the ASA. The, the FAA have people who they call DAR, a Designated Airworthiness Representative, DAR. They also have a DER, a Designated Engineering Representative. So these are individuals with the power to represent the FAA. We don't have this in EASA. We do not have any representatives of EASA with any power. So we need to get our approval from the Part 21 organization direct. So there is a difference. However, because of the bilateral agreements, that if an approve, if a, a, a modification has been approved under the FAA system, uh, generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, it will be accepted when we import the aircraft. Generally speaking, uh, there are some exceptions, and, and we we need to be careful with some repairs, for example. It's possible in the FAA system uh, that a DER, a Designated Engineering Representative, or a DAR can give permission for a repair to be performed which is outside of the Structure Repair Manual, the SRM. It's not possible in EASA. Why? Because you must get the uh, permission not from a person, but from a EASA Part 21 organisation. 